power of creative expression and its ability to transcend time and space, ethnicity and religion, age and gender can be experienced when one unravels the stories of those who have become practitioners and patrons of art forms not situated in the cultural ethos of the geographies into which they were born. A sustained engagement with India's legacy of traditional art practices by expatriates such as Yuriko and her contemporaries commenced at a time when these art forms were just beginning to be subsumed by mass media. With culture as a strong anchor, they have explored the boundaries of identity, of profession, of newer forms of patronage, of innovation and of their own experiences. This is their odyssey, always evolving, ever continuing, the Indian odyssey. There is a universal vocabulary which Yuriko is committed to when she begins to etch her experiences on canvas. During the past many years, she has been assimilating elements of Indian philosophy and myth through her paintings. Also a sensitive landscapist, Yuriko's canvases tell how her encounters with nature are absorbed, mulled over, and then turned into sublime images. The Banana Leaf series has been one such image that has persisted in Yuriko's work since her days as a student of fine arts in Japan. Though resident of the deep Kerala landscape, the Banana Leaf series holds within its presence a detail and imagination that is very Japanese. Banana is always, you know, had a kind of a image, you know, particularly after getting married with Rajiv, particularly has become a image of plenty as a you know warm country people will not die you can get yield time to time you just raise your hand get banana and eat you will not die you will not starve so that kind of an image paradise one theme is always continuing no? and it doesn't cease in me it means that you know i'm still entangled with the idea. So I'm trying to solve that question in me by painting also. So working on the painting, sometimes working on myself. The most striking aspect of this dialogue comes forth in Yuriko's series of the self. The artist paints herself in many formulations of her being which moves from distinctively Japanese or Christian sense to one where she manifests herself in her Indian formulation of a goddess. I thought that some uh, figure which is coming out, you know, over the mountain, Himalayas. Durga has lots of weapons, so I have taken out all these weapons because it was not needed actually. So I have taken out the weapons and put the mudras. So mudras came from you know, I was doing yoga, so, you know, the meaning of mudras, health-related mudras, and uh, gives the, you know, a good effect on you as well as to the environment as well. So everything is related, you, your feeling, and, the, you know, circumstances and environment, the people around you. So it, you know, affects each other. Like Yuriko, Sasuke Raude has two values in environment that nurtures her creativity and skill as a musician. Born in the Netherlands, Sasuke's unique contribution to the legacy of Indian stringed instruments has been the innovative Indian cello. people are apprehensive before they hear me there's this Western lady playing this different instrument 
and saying she is playing Indian classical music. Um, well, that is a new thing. And any new thing, um, people wonder what it is at the best. If they're not so open-minded, they might be a bit, a bit more critical. But that's also something to enjoy for me, because I can surprise them with this sound, with this instrument. And I've really had very, very wonderful experiences. <laughs> practitioner in India for the last 12 years, Saskia has been exploring new dimensions of this art form by marrying her love for the Western cello with a deep understanding of Indian classical music. My very first lesson 